Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you. We are in the month of August, praise God. And listen, like I told you yesterday, God's great plans for us is to establish His love in your heart and manifest that love all around you, praise God. Listen, God loves you. And I know this month, he's going to be manifesting his love in your life like you have never experienced it before. Praise God. It's a new month. And before we get into this broadcast, release your faith right now. Because I told you God is going to be manifesting his love. So join me right now as we make demand for your daily bread. And let me tell you something. Whatever you have been experiencing from God before, there is an increase. Praise God. Yes, and there is an increase in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Join me in faith right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. I receive it right now. I receive increase in my portions, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now then, turn your Bibles with me to John. John, the book of John. I love the book of John. Praise God. Chapter 15. Now I'm going to be sharing with you. I don't know how long we're going to talk, about, talk on this, but that's what the Lord have laid in my heart to share with you. The manifestation of God's love. Praise God. The manifestation of God's love. For the Lord told me this month, everything you've been talking about for the last three months, it's time for the manifestation, physical manifestation of these things in your life. That's the word I received from the Lord. So that means expect good things to happen. Praise God. John chapter 15. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 8, Jesus speaking here. I've told you before, get a red letter Bible. Or even, even um, on your phone, you can see that the, the, some, yeah, even on your phone, some apps give you the red letter edition of the Bible where the books of the words of Jesus are written in red. So you, you notice from John chapter 14 to John chapter 17 to the end of John chapter 17. They are all in red. Praise God. It tells you Jesus was speaking for that long. Praise God. Now, understand also that the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. So it's not like Jesus was written or was doing an audio book, you know, as it or, or or speaking so that he can convert it into writing. You no, know, he was just spending time with his disciples and he was speaking deep truths to them. Now here's what he said in verse 8, John chapter 15. I want you to look at this closely and meditate on this. Meditate on this until it takes a hold of your whole being. I'm telling you the truth. It says, herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. He said, this is how my father is going to be glorified and how is that that you bear much fruit and then he says so shall ye be my disciples now there are lots of concepts we have we've gotten um, wrong in in our in our work of faith and in christendom and that's because People have not taken time to query some things that they had, uh, that have formed their mentality for so long. And they've not looked at the practicality of these things that they have believed. They say the best way to know God is to walk with Him. It's not by studying the Bible. I'm telling you the truth. You don't know God by studying the Bible. You will know about Him, but you, don't, you will not know Him. You will only know him when you experience him. 
That's why Jesus said, the scriptures, they testify of me. But you've got to come to me so that you will have life. So if you know the scripture from cover to cover, but you've never met Jesus, you don't go to Jesus, you've not had an encounter with Jesus, I'm sorry to tell you this, you don't know him. You don't know him. The scriptures is not him. The scriptures testifies about him. Praise God. Just like you're driving and you get to the signpost, doesn't mean you've gotten to the destination. The signpost is pointing you to the destination. So you don't come at the signpost because you see it written there. You know, welcome to Susan's place. Two, two kilometers away. And then you just say, ah, I have seen it. Can't you see the name? You've not reached your destination. Go further. Go further. Enter the compound experience the compound praise god it's the same thing with jesus so we are talking about the manifestation of his love in your life and what does that mean now he says this is what is going to get my father to be glorified mm. so who wants to glorify the father who wants to? Do you want to glorify? Yes, of course, I want to glorify the Father. He says, this is what will glorify the Father. He says, year in, in this is the Father glorified. What is it that you bear much fruit? Okay, now when I'm done with this, you just simply ask yourself, is God glorified in me? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. So Jesus said it is your bearing of, not just bearing fruit, bearing of much fruit that will make the Father to be glorified. Now, simple, simply put, you, a farmer plants, or a, a farmer in, plants in his farm. Now, everybody plants. You do all the things you're supposed to do. You water it, you add fertilizer, you do everything you're supposed to do with it and, and stuff. All that effort you're putting in will mean nothing if men don't see the harvest. Are you getting what I'm saying? After putting all that effort, get the best machinery on site, you know, on the farm, and then you till the ground, you do everything. People are just watching and say, ah, man, this man is really... All those efforts will be meaningless if at the time of bearing fruit, nothing comes out of that thing. Or you just have some sparring, you know, the, the, the tree just bearing sparring. Everybody's going to wonder at you. Everybody's going to look at you and like, I'm sure there's something he didn't do right. But they saw your efforts. They will just conclude that there is something that you didn't do right. You, the farmer. So now Jesus said, the Father is going to be glorified when you bear much fruit. Not just that when you bear fruit, much fruit. So God understands. Every effort he's putting in your life will be meaningless if there, are no, if there is no fruit. Not just fruit, if the fruit is not much. And I've told you this before. I think I told you last month during the, the broadcast on, on being a witness. I shared this with you. The fruit we bear. I say, oh, bear fruit, bear fruit. I've told you. It's singular. He, he didn't say bear much fruits. Look at it in verse 8. He didn't say bear much fruits. He said bear much fruits. And I told you the fruits that we bear is love. Now, you are a branch. And then, thank you Holy Spirit. You are to bear fruit. Take notes. Because when we say the fruit is love, People still have the wrong mindset about love because they think, mm, not again. So I know where I'm going to. That guy that, for, that hurts me, I have to forgive him, right? Because I have to walk in love. This person that I have to forgive him, right? 
I have to walk in love. Look, this thing eh, is tiring. I don't think I can do it again. No, 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 hold on. Just calm down. Because first of all, you cannot give what you don't have. And two, if you have received something freely, it will be so easy for you to give it freely. So why is it difficult, difficult sometimes for God's children to even walk in love as you're thinking it? Why is it difficult for you to walk in love? Because you have not received the right measure of love. You have not. And two, you are not bearing the fruit of love. How do I bear the fruit of love? Is there not to go around loving people and just taking all their nonsense? No, sir. This is how we bear the fruit of love. I say we are the branches. He is the vine. We are connected to him. His life is flowing in us. But then men ought to see that we are producing fruit that represents him. So the fruit, I want you to listen to me. The fruit we bear are the physical manifestations of God's work in our lives. Hear me again. The fruit we bear are the physical manifestation of God's work in our lives. Did you get that? I need it to sink. So if God is walking genuinely in your life, something is supposed to be produced. And what is that? Jesus said, the words that I speak, I speak my Father's words. And then he said, the Father that dwells in me, Ayada Basakaya, he does the works. Okay. The father that is in me, he's doing the work. Huh. So what am I doing? I thought you say, the father speaks to me and I do the work. He said, no, the father that dwells in me, he does the works. What was Jesus referring to? And you remember Jesus said to the Jews one time, he said, if you, if you, if you have nothing to believe in, believe for the very work's sake. Now, why did he say they should believe for the work's sake? It's because the works were the manifestations that God was working in him. So listen to me, brothers and sisters. There must be physical things happening in your life that show that God is working in you. Now, I'm sharing this message with you to stir you up. It's not for you to sit down and say, mm, that means God is not working in me. No, it's time to prove. Peter tells us, do diligence to make your calling an election sure. And, and I want to even understand for some, from, 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 from some folks, how do you cope not being sure that God is working in you? and you call yourself a Christian, how do you cope? How do you cope struggling from Monday to Sunday and all your life is full of struggles? Where is the God element in your life? And you're a Christian? You're a child of God? Do you know what it means to be a child of God? Have you considered it that, look, I am a child of God of God. Have you considered it? Have you, have you thought of, have you meditated on that truth? I'm a child of God. I am a child. Do you know what that means? It's not something everybody can just say. That's why the Jews were so angry with Jesus because of the way he claimed ownership of God. He said, I and my father are one. Ah, who, who, what is it? I said, they took up stones to stone him. Who are you? Because they understood what that statement meant. 
They understood that. You know, they said, look, you, you, you claim to be the son of God. How? Come on now. Who, who are you? We know your father. Joseph was your dad. We know your mom. We know your brothers and sisters. Don't come here and start telling us that you're the son of God. They couldn't understand it. So Jesus said, if you don't want to believe, believe for the works sake because those works are done by his father that is dwelling in him so now if you have the same father dwelling in you because that's what we've gotten that's what we've received we've received the spirit of adoption Romans tells us and whereby we cry Abba Father it's not something we cry from the outside. It's a cry from the inside, from the depth of our heart. Abba, Father. I have a Father. I have a Father. Now a good Father in that matter. Now do you know what that means? Take time to meditate on this. That Look, I have a Father. Listen, listen. Listen, there are times you need to just pause and forget your educational qualification. Forget the skill you have acquired. Forget everything else that exists. And just sit down and tell yourself this truth. Despite everything, God is my Father. Oh, if you've given your heart to Jesus Christ, you've come into that adoption, and that's why the Bible gives us that knowledge that God sent His Spirit into your heart. From the moment the Spirit came into your heart, and you are not saved until the Spirit is there. Because you can't get saved because you say, okay, I want to be saved. Okay, so what do I do? Okay, confess your confess Jesus. So how do I do it? Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That God raised you from the dead, that God raised you. I confess with my mouth, I confess that you are Lord, you are Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. So say, you are saved. How? Now that's the misconception a lot of people have. So we have these people who have who we have led to make this confess, confession. And they all believe that mm, the pastor say I'm saved. The pastor say it's not the pastor that tells you you're saved. You yourself will know that you are saved. Why? Because you cannot receive the Holy Spirit and remain the same. It is impossible. It is impossible. You can't receive the Holy Spirit and just remain the same. No! Something happens inside of you. There is a transformation that takes place. Yes! Even the first place you will notice it. Ayana Mashaya is in the place of prayer. For the first time, when you want to pray, you will hear those words come out of your mouth, but from the depth of your heart. You will hear yourself say, Father, and this thing, it will mean, it. If, if you know this, Father God, oh, Father God, oh, Father God, you don't know what you're talking about. When you kneel down to pray and say, Father, I and then you, you, you see him, you sense him, your heart touches him. I call him Father because he is my Father. He is my Father. And so, I am. You know, some of you have never thought about it. And that's what I want you to do today. Is he your Father? Beyond the talking, no, this is you. Beyond what anybody has told you. Beyond anything you have read. You, you, you. Is he your father? See, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And even right now, I just want you to pause and ask yourself that question. Do I really know God as my father? Is he really my father? Me now, me and God. Is he my father? If you're not sure, you can get sure right now. You don't need me. No, you don't need me. Talk to him. He hears. He's hearing you. Say, Lord, 
I want to really be your son. I want you to be my father. I sincerely say that, not just saying it, mean it. And wait for his response. Oh, he's going to respond to you. I know him. Praise God. He will respond to you. There is something that's going to be stirred up inside of you. You yourself will know something different has taken place. Praise God. Ooh, my time is up. I pray that the love of God, you will not just sense it, you will manifest it. As we go into these teachings, there's going to be a mighty demonstration of God's love in your life. In Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.